The U.S. Army Medical Field Service School presents Application of Plaster Cast. The purpose of this program is to expose you to the principles, equipment needs, and duties of the operating room specialist in cast application. In the majority of operative procedures that require plaster cast, the surgeon will apply the cast or a specialist specifically trained in cast application. Upon completion of the operative procedure, the sterile dressing was applied and covered by a layer of sterile web room. The sterile drapes were removed and the cast cart brought into the operating room. The operating room table and floor were covered with brown paper to protect these areas from plaster spatterings. Since the scrub specialist has to maintain his sterility until the patient is removed from the operating room, it will be necessary to procure the assistance of an additional specialist. In the simulated procedure that you will see, the patient has undergone a tendon repair, which will necessitate a mobilization of the hand and wrist through the application of a short arm cast. The surgeon has decided that since immobilization of the limb is paramount to plaster application, he will hold alignment, plus supervise the circulator in the application of the cast. The assisting specialist will aid the circulator by passing padding, web roll, and preparing and passing the plaster. The surgeon is now positioning the hand and wrist in proper alignment. Unsterile web roll is applied in a circular fashion, exercising care in applying it smoothly and evenly up to approximately two inches below the elbow. You will note that in this instance we are using extra layers of web roll to pad the bony prominence of the wrist. Now that the arm has been sufficiently padded, the plaster will be the next layer applied. The circulator's assistant must now select the correct size of plaster, which in this case will be three inches in width. The wrapper is removed, and a small tab is made in the exposed end of the plaster roll. The specialist has already prepared a bucket of tepid water. As you remember from your classroom instruction, cold water will cause the plaster to set much too slow, while on the other hand, hot water will accelerate the setting rate of the plaster. The circulator's assistant will now immerse the plaster roll into the tepid water in a vertical position. Note the bubbles emerging from the roll. This denotes that air pockets are being expelled from the roll. When the bubbles diminish, the roll is ready for application. Removing the roll, the water remaining in the roll will be expelled by a gentle pressure on the plaster. Observe that while the specialist is expelling the water, he has secured the tab with the thumb and index finger of one hand. This roll is now ready for application. The plaster roll is passed to the circulator with the tab extended. The circulator will now apply the plaster starting approximately one half inch from the edge of the web roll on the palm portion of the hand.
The plaster is applied in a smooth, even, circular fashion. Note that the plaster is rolled on and not pulled. Also note that the specialist is smoothing the plaster with the palm of his hand, since indentations and pressure could be the result of using his fingers. Once one half the roll has been applied, the circulator's assistant will now prepare the next roll of plaster. The circulator will continue to apply the remaining one half of the roll up to one half inch from the proximal end of the web roll. As the second roll is being applied, the excess one-half inch of web roll is folded over and incorporated in the cast with the remaining plaster. This incorporation creates a smooth, even end of the cast, preventing irritation to the patient and fragmentation of the plaster. After the plaster is applied, a final smoothing is accomplished by the specialist wetting his hands and using gentle pressure with his palms over the entire cast. Any excess plaster around the thumb opening would be trimmed. Any plaster spatterings noted on the patient's skin would be washed off at this time. After a brief period to allow for initial drying of the cast, the patient may be removed to the ward. This concludes the application of plaster casts. In the second part of our presentation, we will examine the cutting of the cast from the patient's arm when it is ready for removal.